Space, the final frontier, or more specifically, Mars, the next frontier? Mars is considered to be the most likely planet Earth will colonize first due to its proximity to our home planet. And if you're a sci-fi fan like me, the idea of moving to another planet is definitely exciting. I mean, have you seen The Martian? But I hate to be the bearer of bad news guys, but as far as moving planets goes, Mars is pretty low on the list. Why you ask? NASA is terrified of Mars and its uninhabitability. Sup guys, I'm Aiden and I'm gonna tell you with top 5 scary reasons NASA will never send people to Mars. Starting at number 5, we have Martians. I know, I know, mentioning Martians sounds crazy. But hear me out, over the many years of Mars rovers exploring the red planet, NASA has gathered a plethora of information and footage, and within that footage, could be proof of alien life. If you look closely in some photos taken by NASA's many rovers, you can actually see some dark streaks, which may at first look like a shadow, but are in fact flowing water. And this isn't just some screwball theory. NASA themselves has confirmed the existence of water on Mars. Scientists say that the main reason life could be sustained on Earth in the first place was the presence of water. So the chances of there being life on Mars is actually quite high. On top of this, there have been findings of strange rock formations and human-like figures found on Mars, perhaps pointing to proof of advanced life forms. The implications of there being life on Mars is grave. If humans were to go to Mars and meet these aliens, we could be putting ourselves or them in danger. There is a very real chance that any potential Martians are hostile towards humans and could harm them. Another issue could be disease. If a human were to contract an alien disease, our immune systems would not be prepared to deal with it, and it could lead to death. The same problem exists for Martians, who we don't want to endanger. Aliens are way too cool to die, but that's not the worst of it. Next up at number four is Mars's intense radiation. One big problem with Mars is that it doesn't have what is called a magnetosphere, which is pretty much the parts in and around a planet that contain its magnetic field. What this field does is protect us from the sun's radiation. Earth has one, and that's why we only have to wear sunscreen when the sun is out. Mars doesn't. And if that isn't enough, Mars is regularly exposed to cosmic rays and solar flares and winds, causing the planet to be even more irradiated. A study by the European Space Agency finds that someone on a mission to Mars would receive a radiation dosage 700 times stronger than what you would on Earth. Long time or extreme exposure to radiation can cause all sorts of effects, like the loss of hair, acute illness, seizures, terrifying mutations, death, and in Spider-Man's case, the ability to climb on walls. Of course, you wouldn't really get superpowers if you were irradiated, unless you call heart failure a superpower. Physicists actually say that one day in space is equivalent to the radiation received on Earth for a whole year. Apart from astronauts on the International Space Station, humans are very rarely exposed to such high levels of radiation, so the long-term effects of space radiation are still somewhat of a mystery. With this much danger and uncertainty surrounding radiation, it's not worth the risk of sending humans to the red planet. So unless you've got some SPF 1 million, I wouldn't recommend tanning on Mars anytime soon. And NASA wouldn't either. And to make things even worse, constant solar winds over time have made Mars's atmosphere incredibly thin, which exposes humans to, you guessed it, even more radiation. Speaking of, Mars's atmosphere is gonna be coming in at number three. Much like our own planet, Mars has an atmosphere, weather, and some beautiful views. However, none of what Mars has is at all like what we have here on Earth. First of all, its atmosphere is composed of different elements than ours. Earth's atmosphere is mostly nitrogen, oxygen, and it's got a little bit of argon, a little bit of water vapor, touch of carbon dioxide. Mars's atmosphere, on the other hand, is 95% carbon dioxide and has trace amounts of nitrogen, oxygen, methane, and other gases. The most glaring difference in the two atmospheres is the amount of carbon dioxide there is compared to oxygen and nitrogen. The difference is a major reason for why us Earthlings wouldn't last a second on Mars without a spacesuit. As humans, we need oxygen to breathe. When we inhale, we take oxygen from the air and use it to fuel our bodies. When we exhale, all the other gases come out as our body has no use for it. Most of what we exhale is carbon dioxide. So when put on a planet which has an atmosphere that's almost entirely composed of the gas that our body gets rid of and has barely any of the one we need to function, things go bad quickly. Even if you were able to breathe carbon dioxide, Mars's air is so full of dust that you would still be short of breath. And that's not all. The air on Mars is also extremely thin. The standard air pressure on Earth 
is 1,013 millibars. On Mars, the surface pressure averages to 7. That's less than 1% of the air pressure on Earth. When under such low pressures, the human body reacts in horrifying ways, such as extreme swelling, lung rupture, and bruising. But worst of all, Mars's low pressure will cause a fatal condition called ebolism, which causes every liquid in your body to boil. It doesn't even have to be hot on Mars for this to happen. You would boil regardless of temperature. Which, yeah, is a pretty good reason to stay on Earth. A mix of suffocation and bubbly bodily fluids are a dynamic duo when it comes to Mars's unsurvivable atmosphere. But what many fail to recognize is the danger of number two, Mars's brutal temperatures. If you've ever seen a photo of Mars, you would know the planet is pretty much just one big desert. And call me crazy, but that screams that this planet is super hot to me. But in fact, the opposite is true. Yes, that's right, Mars is actually an incredibly cold planet. In fact, its temperatures get so low, they can prove fatal. Now, in all fairness, this isn't all the time. Mars can reach temperatures as high as 20 degrees Celsius, which is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a pleasant temperature, caused mostly by the heat of the sun. But when the sun goes down, you're going to regret not packing a thicker coat, as the desert planet's temperatures can get as low as minus 153 degrees Celsius, which is minus 225 degrees Fahrenheit. The lowest recorded temperature on Earth was minus 89 degrees Celsius, which is minus 129 degrees Fahrenheit. And that was in Antarctica. The temperature known as absolute zero, which is a temperature that is so cold that it is physically impossible to reach it by natural means, is only about about minus 273 degrees Celsius, which is minus 460 Fahrenheit. That means that Mars's coldest temperatures are actually closer to absolute zero than they are to its warmest temperatures. And that's just nighttime. Mars, like Earth, has seasons. And when Mars reaches winter, it gets bone chilling. Snow, ice, frost, you name it. It covers the planet during Martian winters, getting several feet of snow. And because of its thin, carbon dioxide rich atmosphere, it actually snows dry ice. Because dry ice is made up of carbon dioxide, as it lands and turns back into a gas through sublimation, it fills the air with even more carbon dioxide, creating a cold breathing hazard for humans. On top of all this, during the winter, air pressure drops greatly, proving Mars to be a near impossible planet to visit as a human. The cold, barren wasteland that is Mars is certainly a mighty place to fear. But the scariest reason NASA won't send people to Mars is number one on this list. It's its toxic, dust storms. If you were wondering what makes the red planet so red, the answer is Mars's surplus of dust. There's actually so much dust on Mars that it gets kicked up into the atmosphere, making it appear red. On Earth, we have hurricanes, but on Mars they have dust storms. If you've seen The Martian, then you would know that these dust storms can reach hundreds of feet in height and will lay waste to anything in its path. In the movie, the storm is seen ripping apart an antenna, some equipment, and the astronauts camp. How it looks in the movie isn't that far off from reality, and that one was one of the lighter dust storms. About annually, Mars will face dust storms that reach the size the equivalent to entire continents on Earth. These storms are not only much bigger than the usual ones, but are also far more intense. And very rarely, a bunch of normal storms will come together and grow into a planet encircling dust storm, or as NASA calls them, global dust storms. These global dust storms are as unpredictable as they are dangerous. The damage these storms would do to a human or human colony is immeasurable. Not only that, but they would make the simple act of going to Mars difficult, as the large masses of dust swirling around could reduce visibility and disrupt flight paths. With how common these storms are, they also have a great potential to disconnect communication between Earth and Mars, jeopardizing any astronaut trying to traverse the solar system's dustiest planet. Which is why Mars is so scary, because it doesn't even take that much to put you in danger. As Mars also has small invisible dust storms called dust devils. While they have no correlation to the actual devil, thank god, they still prove to be a formidable threat. Their erratic nature and unpredictable paths can disrupt disrupt all sorts of equipment, rovers, and people alike. From the sounds of it, Earth's mission to Mars won't be happening anytime soon. We can only hope that conditions improve on the red planet, but considering it's been this way for millions of years, I have high doubts. And that's going to be it for this top 5 list today guys. Thanks for watching and make sure to hit that thumbs up. It really helps us out. See you in the next one.